Welcome to Friday Night's video in our Master Series. This is the 110th video in our Master Series, and I do believe the seventh video in our group mixing phase. So basically, we're ready to start doing some mixing. Now, I wanted to address a concept really quick, is that, you know, we are what we're going to do is we're going to do a chorus here. Now, the concept here is what we do here, you should be able to repeat for every movement transition and break that way you can take these procedures and what i'm doing here and just apply it to every you know section of your song now one thing to keep in mind is that in i've had some songs where i have like this reggae song and they just go through the whole song all the same throughout the whole song i don't have to adjust nothing but right at the bridge or something the guitar did something or some dang thing with the piano and I had to go over there and do a little bit of volume automation there or, you know, something like that. And besides that, you know, all the levels were constant throughout the whole production and it came out just fine. There are times you run into that and times you run into, no, the verse and the chorus are fine together. I'm not having to do different automation or remix them like they're different mixes because it's fine. I'll go through there and do that automation on that verse or on that chorus or whatever, and then I let it run through with the next one. Or I go listen to it and I look at the complement first of what's all in it. If there's a bunch of different stuff in there, then obviously I might want to think about remixing it. If it's not and it's all the same stuff, then I might not need to do that. So really keep that in mind. You know, because there's times that you don't really need to do that. You know, and basically this procedure sometimes can be applied to two or three sections at a time, sometimes to a whole song, and then just some fine-tuning later. So it, that is, you know, basically a truth in mixing. So it's just the concepts that you'll be dealing with. Now, when we go through here, I don't have my presets on for my spatialization presets my track delay i don't see any need for that while we're doing this because we'll address that a little bit but you don't really need to see that while we're doing this so basically you just have to pretend that they're on because you're going to hear it anyway because it's more of a visual thing and trying to get you to practice because i want you to see what's happening and then practice it yourself i don't want you sitting here listening to what i'm doing and then so what that you know is that how you know does that make sense you want to apply the procedures and then understand what you're doing and it's going to be different with whatever you're working on so you may have to you know take other things into consideration as you go along so basically I'm ready to start mixing, so we'll just, I'm starting with the chorus, but could, this could be the intro or whatever, because basically, you go one step at a time from one movement to the next movement to the next movement, and so on and so forth, and you have to make those decisions on whether you can mix one movement and another movement that are next to each other the same or not, or if you need to mix them a little bit differently because of the way the complement of instrument instruments in there or what kind of effect you're trying to get and all kinds of things. So that's a hard to tell you because I can't see what you're trying to mix right now. So you're going to have to formulate that decision on your own from looking at what you're working on. So basically, I've gone into my vocals. And in my vocals, I turn on my vocals. And off my tracks, they're coming out of minus 6 dB. And I'm getting about minus 12 here. I've got minus 3 on my bus. So I've got plenty of headroom. I don't need to fuss with that at all. I mean, I'm good to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is... Since I've got it set up, I'm going to go ahead and grab that EQ. You know, we've got this other mat metering bus. You may not see me do it, but I'll jump back and forth in there sometimes to look at my tonal balance to see how things are balancing out. Because once I get in here and I go, okay, well, I'm going to start blending, blending in these harmonies. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go into my harmonies here. I'm going to go back into here. And I'm going to go, okay, I don't need to worry about setting these up on the vocals. I need to get the harmonies turned on so that the harmonies are present, you know, coming in on that side chain. And I've side chained this like we talked about. So basically that's on that meter one bus. So what I'm looking at here now is I'm looking at these harmonies coming on here. I'm not worried about the out front vocals. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at these meters and see how it's sitting right now. And I see they're a little loud. That pink is a lot louder than the blue, so my harmonies need to come down a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those harmonies down a little bit and to where they sit there. 
you know, and I've got them down, and I can see they're quite a bit down farther than some things happening on the main out front vocals. So once I've got them and I know they're down below there pretty well, then I'm going to start bringing them up in there. Sometimes I'll bring it down a lot, and then I just start bringing them up. You know, I start bringing them up, I start listening to it, that sounds like it's doing pretty good, and then da da da, and I'm getting them to where, because these are supportive tracks. So supportive tracks are going to be much closer to out front tracks than a lot of backing tracks, because most of the time supportive tracks work really closely together, like a harmonies to vocals, you know, they almost blend sometimes. You have the out front vocal that's riding above them, but they're really close to being as close to the same level so that they kind of are really supportive because of the harmonic interplay and the musical interplay that's happening a lot of times. So I just start bringing that in into there and seeing what's happening. Now, sometimes that, you know, there will be times that here, right here on the spot, I'll go, okay, well, right here, right here, I'm hearing it. And I know that this out front vocal right here needs to go up a little bit. So, I mean, it's right there. For some reason, I'm, it's hitting something. And I, I either have to go back and compress my harmonies some more because something's jumping up a little bit louder there that's causing a problem that's riding up above the vocalist. And I might have to go in there and either automate like that or I might have to do some written automation. I mean, I might actually have to go in there right on the spot and freehand some automation and go no right here it just needs to go up just a little bit does that make sense and you know write some automation in there i'm not sure what the hell is happening with my automation right there but it should be just writing it's because it's freehand and i'm not sure why it's doing that but anyway i might have to go write some automation in there that's not unheard of but a lot of times what i'll do is as i blend this in here and i've got this mixing i'll listen to it pretty carefully and i'll be like going i want a rough mix at this point i mean it's not really rough but it's it's pretty close to what i want it and so what i'm doing is i bring this up until i'm pretty happy with it i keep bringing it up bringing it up bringing it up and i'm like yeah that sounds pretty good it's underneath the out front vocal it's not riding above it at all but there's a couple issues and I'll make a note. I'll sit down and say, you know, at the second word or at line 26, you know, wherever, however you want to word it, that the harmonies jumped up a little bit. And I need to do, rework the automation or take a look at it, you know, to see if I need to bump it up a little bit or to come in here and drop it down on this harmony section a little bit there. Sometimes I'll just do it now. Sometimes I'll make some notes about it and come back at it and see this is basically a rough mix. Does that make sense? So you have to make your own mind up about how you're going to see that because it can be debatable. Sometimes, depending on what I'm going to be doing, that I might not. And I might. It just kind of depends. A lot of times it's better to catch things, you know, now. You know, it just is, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it's really minor. And I'll just go through and make a note and I'll say, no, I need to do maybe something here. I'm not sure what, you know, and I need to go back in there. Now, I've gone through here and I've listened to this, and I've listened to this really well, and I'm pretty happy with it. That's a rough draft. Now, whether or not you deal with that now or make some notes, you might go in there and say, okay, I need to bring that down just a little bit right there, not much. And over here, that's just got to go up just a little bit so it blends with that a little bit. You know, I don't know. And my vocals, I mean, right here, I mean, it actually could just be a little bit louder. You know I mean? I can boost it up a little bit like there. And just keep going over and listening to it and listening to it and listening and making fine-tuned adjustments as you go through here. Because now that you're mixing the other thing into it, that you're making these adjustments and sometimes really teeny minor adjustments, you know, that just make it flow really well. So that the flow is going along. <coughs> Depending on how well the work you've done so far is working together. Does that make sense? So let's say you've got it done. You've blended it. You've brought it up. You've done a little bit of fine tuning, and it sound you've got it to where it sounds great. You've done some automation work on it. it sounds great, and but you've got uh, you can maybe clean it up a little bit. So you know as you're doing that, you've got this going through there. Now you can go back through there and say, well, now the out front vocals they sound great. You know once they're mixed in to that, they don't sound like they really anything's interfering or anything. But 
I go to these here, and I'm hearing that these on the chorus or on the harmony here, that it could be, it could be, I could cut out a little bit of low end. You know what I mean? I can hear it. There's something going on there. And I can see going stuff going on here. Then I'm going to go ahead and bring that off there because I see the majority of it's around in here. And there's not a whole lot going on there but dirt. And that's, if I didn't cut it out well enough. Most of the time, that stuff, I've cut it out pretty well. But it might just be there's some stuff going on the low end. Or you might have the high end that you might want to cut that out a little bit. You know, it's like, that can be cut out a little bit. You know, how does that sound? How does that sound good? Like it's cutting out harmonic content. You know, you may or may not cut out some of that. You know, does that make sense? And get it set. Now, after that, you're going through, you're not really messing with those out front vocals, but those harmonies, let's say that you've got one track. So you've got one track that's way back here on this harmony. And you're going, okay, I can hear this one here on the harmony. And I know it's like, I, I'm soloing this one, soloing that one. It's this one right here. And I need to go in there, and I can tell that I need to boost that one. That one right, then that harmony, that right around, I'm going to go along where that equal loudness contour dictates first. And then I realize, nope, it's just a high end. It just, it needs to, I'm going to put a shelf EQ on there, and it just needs to come up a little bit right there. You know, it just needs, it needs a little bit more air on there. Yeah, that sounds a little bit air. How's that sound now? Now I've got it looped. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. And it's like not quite exactly right. So I go back to this bus and I grab this EQ on that harmony and then I go back in there. So that, well, the whole bit of it could use a little bit of EQ on the upper end. So I'm going to go ahead and kick that up a little bit on all of it and say, yeah, okay, that sounds really good. Now I've done a little bit of EQ work on there. I've high little pass filter a little bit to cut out anything that I don't need so that anything that might be happening in there that I've cut out, that it's gone. Does that make sense? That way any unneeded content is gone. And I've gone through and adjusted any individual tracks that they sound like it might be an issue. And on the bus itself, of that next track that I've mixed in, I went in and dealt with any issues on there. Now, you could also have that, okay, well, at this point, you know, it needs some other type of work. There might be some other type of work you think you need to do on these individual tracks. And we talked about that because at this point, that how well are they working together? Do you need to go back and do some re-editing? Do you need to go back and look at some reprocessing? Take a look at that now. Really listen and do a good job. Really take a look. How is it going together? Do I need to redo some of my flow editing? You might even have to go back to that original track and go back to this original vocal track and redo some of your flow editing. You might go, nope, this word needs to stretch out a little bit and this one needs to be a little bit right in here. It needs to be a little bit, this word needs to be a little bit louder or I need to bring that up a little bit. I can't do that with automation. You may just be able to do it with automation. But if it's word length or something, you might have to redo it, go back and do some of your flow editing on it. So now is the time to do that. So, you know, we're dealing with those issues one step at a time. So, and so we've taken a look at that and our meters, what are we looking at? Our tonal balance. I use a tonal balance control that gives me an idea of, you know, what the content is going in there as I mix certain things together because I want it to stay in this range here you know for the most part you get used to hearing it i use visual tools also because it helps sometimes you get tired when you're mixing and you're just like dude i've been mixing for hours and i'm tired what does that say oh i didn't hear that because i'm tired you know but does that a problem oh what is that i need to where is that coming from i need to go fix that you know does that make sense not only am i looking at it there i'm looking at all my spectrum meters to see if i see anything out of whack you know, some out of whack that doesn't look right. Am I seeing, you know, something that doesn't look right? I'm hearing okay, but do I see some frequency harmonic content that looks like it needs to be dealt with? Does that make sense? And so you're going through and checking all those things as you mix this together so that you do a good job and address any issues. And this is one step at a time. So once you've gotten to this point, the issue now is going to be that we're going to have to go to the next video because we're out of time. So peace out, love. I hope you enjoyed this first video as we get started mixing, and I'll see you in the next video.